So today's web dev tip is all about an HTML input type that you might not have come across, which is the range input type. So say you had an input box, you'd normally set its type here, and you might set something like text, which is uh, usually the default, uh, which gives you a text box that you can actually enter so that the user can enter some data into, uh, but it is, and it can be a mix of uh, letters and numbers. But what about if you want to actually constrain the value that they're typing in to a certain range? So this obviously only works for numbers, but we could actually change this to a range type and that will actually give us a slider where the user can slide from left to right to provide a value for whatever value they're filling in. So this input that is provided by the browser is styled by the browser, so it's going to look slightly different in uh, each browser. And I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, but we can do a few things with this. The first thing is we can actually set up some values for it to, to provide input for us. So for example, we can say the min value that it provides us is zero and the maximum value that it gives us is 100. So if we save that, now whenever we're sliding from left to right, when the user's doing that, uh, they're providing us with a value within that range. We can also provide a step value as well. So if we say uh, each increment on the slider is a step of 10, you should be able to see now that it kind of snaps into a certain value, uh, which, so it's basically uh, for every 10 steps that are in this uh, 0 to 100 range. Uh, and so we can get the value a bit more specific uh, if we want to snap that to a specific uh, step range. Uh, of course, if we want to get the value of this in JavaScript, we can just uh, select the elements on the console here uh, with a query selector and we've got our input there. Then we just get its value and you can see it's 30 because it's kind of in the uh, lower end of the range at the moment. Okay, so that's how we use the range element. There's one other thing that you can do with it, which doesn't work in all browsers, uh, but we can actually provide this with uh, some ticks, some indications as to where uh, the range is snapped to. And you see what I mean by that in just a second. And we can use a data list element for that. So if we uh, provide a data list uh, HTML element here and just call it uh, ticks, for example, and we'll have 10 actual uh, points on the range element that we can stop at at the moment. Let's provide 10 options. I think that's 10 there. So the first one will be zero, then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Oh, I missed one there, so oops, 80, and 90. And then the final one is 100. So if we want to associate this data list with the input, we do a similar thing that we did uh, in a previous tutorial when we looked at the autocomplete for a text input box. So we've just provided the list as ticks there. You can see we get a little marker here in Chrome uh, just to show us which step we're on and where the other steps are available. Uh, so we can then see it, uh, the range element is then snapping to each of those ticks on the page. So as for styling this range input, it is provided by the browser and it does differ from each browser implementation. So you can't really style it that much. You can reuse the functionality, but you need to actually kind of provide your own elements on top of it and hide everything else that's in there. So it kind of defeats the object a little bit. Uh, but you can see from the uh, Can I Use page uh, that it's pretty much supported in all browsers apart from older versions of IE. And just to show you what I mean by the different implementations uh, from different browsers, you can see this is how the range element looks in Firefox here on my Mac. And you can see it looks very different. And that data list element as well uh, to display the ticks isn't actually working as well. It's not supported in Firefox. There you go. Next time you need to ask the user for a value and it's in a specific range, then you can consider using the range element. But just be aware that it might look different for different users in different browsers. So that's it for the range element. Stay tuned for more web dev tips.